to Encounter Church, and welcome to this new season, the season of new beginnings, the season of preparation for all that God has for us, the season where we get to walk and run and run and run with all our might, with purpose for everything that God has called us, the remnant to be. So as we will see, as things spring forth, yeah. we will rise up as the remnant like never before. Yeah. And right now we're going to rise up with remnant praise. So whether you're here in the sanctuary or engaging online, this is our new season. We act a little bit differently. We praise a little bit differently. We walk differently because we have newness to walk into because God has promised to do a new thing. So let that praise arise. Let's put our hands together all around here, you at home. Let's get our praise on. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So glad that I am redeemed by love. So glad.
worthy, God. For those of you engaging online, you can go ahead and declare that. You are so worthy. Go ahead, comment that, and we will speak it out. Ready? One, two, three. You, you are, are so worthy, worthy, Lord. He is so worthy, and he is so faithful. He's so good. Yes, he is. Yes, you are. And all we have to do is speak the name of Jesus. When we don't know how to pray, we can cry out, Jesus. 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 I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, we prophesy. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. We declare your name.
shout Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the stream, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I thank you for the name. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak His holy name. and answers us. Lord, we thank you for another day of life. We thank you for a new season. It's spring. Father, have your way among us. Lord, perform surgery in our hearts this day. Make every crooked path straight. Lord, do surgery in our heart, our mind. That everything we think lines up with your word. That everything we think lines up with your word. That everything we speak lines up with your word. 
that we would present ourselves according to 1 Thessalonians 5.23 in spirit, soul, and body, blameless before you. So we present ourselves to you today, God. We lay ourselves at your feet. We lay ourselves at your feet, Lord. Somebody declare out loud, I lay myself at your feet, Lord. I I lay myself myself at at your feet, feet, Lord. Lord. Tell them again. I I lay lay myself myself at at your feet, feet, Lord. There you go. That's it. That's a good position to be in. You are the potter, not us. We are the clay. Mold us and make us and have your way. Father, if any sick among us, I ask right now that you bring healing. For those watching and engaging online, for those that need a healing, stretch your hands right now. If you need a healing in this room, stretch your hands right now. Those of you watching at home, wherever you happen to be, you need a healing, stretch your hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release the healing power to flow. And to bring healing now. Physical healing manifest now. Physical healing manifest now. In the name above every name. Jesus. Emotional healing release now. Bondages break. Addictions die. Heal your people, I pray. Lord, you said it's their bread. Heal them, we pray, in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus. For those watching from coast to coast, from third world countries, those in the UK right now, in Europe, touch them, we pray. Father, we continue, continue to pray for Ukraine. Father, touch, restore these people. Heal them, Lord. For Poland, Lord God, that you would make a way where there was no way for these refugees, Lord. In Germany and the surrounding areas, Lord God. Father, we declare an end to this violence now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Lord, for President Zelensky, who you've raised up, Lord God, as a mighty warrior. Father, protect him. Give him courage, continued courage, strength and wisdom. And Lord, for all of the nations of the earth, all 195, that they would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. For our president, our leadership, our government, from the White House to our house, have your way. For every church today that's preaching the cross, for every church today that's teaching and preaching the blood, have your way, my God. Have your way upon every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, and missionary. And we give you all the glory this day, Father. And Lord, we thank you for this new season. We embrace it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go ahead, give him praise. With hands lifted high, voices to the sky, sing that one more time. Jesus, sing church, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I'll sing his holy name, Over every 
stronghold, declare it. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Sing it one more time and go like this. Go like this, go like this. Break, break every stronghold, sing again. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, Come on, burn like Come a on, fire. Come on, remnant. Come on, remnant. Come on, make that fist and pump it. Break every stronghold, shine through Our the children. shadows. Sing that part again. Come on, church. Declare it. Declare Break it. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. One last time. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Shout! sitting somebody say thank you lamb of god thank you lamb of god but you guys they're on fire they're on fire thank you guys thank you so much thank you jesus thank you lord god somebody shout glory adios somebody shout glory de jesus wow they speak Spanish. You got it. How'd you, they how speak, do you like that? <laughs> they speak Italian. They speak English. And they speak in tongues. Wow. What Something new to put on your resume. <laughs> <laughs> what a fire in this house. Thank yes. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I think, I think... I think that maybe it's because we have a new season before us. I think that's what's happening. I happen to agree with you. Amen. You I'm guys wearing, are excited. I'm wearing yellow and blue again this week, mm -hmm. as last week, yellow and blue. Yes. In honor of Ukraine. Yes. And God's going to turn that situation around. Dear Jesus. And the devil's going down. Amen. Amen. Well, In welcome, every way. Every way. Welcome here to the sanctuary. Yes, welcome everybody. God Section bless you. Section 3, you look so beautiful today. Yes, and handsome. So handsome. Section 2, you look so beautiful. Even yes. the babies. Section mm. 1, you look so beautiful. Everyone's serving. Those I cannot see, but you can see us through the TV. Those of you engaging at home, online, we love you so much. Give That's them all right. a big God bless you. So welcome, 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 welcome all of us together to the glory of God. Today is a new day. It's the first day of spring. I love it. I love it. And we have entered a new season in the natural. But a couple of weeks ago, we've entered a new season Yes. in the spiritual. Yes, we as really a church. Did. As we a really church, did. we really have. Amen. 
grateful for that. Well, our precious Rosemary Hines. Yes. She received her graduation papers. Yes, she did. And is now rejoicing yes. in heaven. <laughs> and there she is coming out of my Escalade. You know, I've had that Escalade for almost 20 years. <laughs> you know, there's an old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Somebody said, well, why don't you get a new one? Well, I said, why should I have a car payment when the car, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just say, hey, plus it's a cool car anyway. You know what I'm saying? Hey, come on. Let's take care. Anyway, Rosemary was so dear to us. We loved her. And there she is. She's coming out of the back of my car because I took her out to lunch one day. That's, uh, I don't know if you guys know Franco's in Streamwood. You guys know Franco's in Streamwood? Nice That's Italian. Like, I think it's on Butita. Uh, Butita. And, and County Farm. And County Farm. And Barrington Road. Barrington Road, there. yeah. So she's coming out there. Oh, spunky Rosemary. And there she is there coming out of my car. And we're about to go into uh, Franco's to get something to eat. Let's see what other picture we have there. Oh, yeah, there she is. She's... She can't make up her mind. Should, should I have the Italian beef or should I do the sausage? Uh, I'm not sure, you know. And you can see the, you can see the owner in the back. Yeah, he photobombed. He said, he said I'm going to make this photobomb worth it. And he's like, <laughs> he thinks I'm not going to ignore. I'm just going to. He, he thinks because he owns the joint, you know, he can just die, you know. <laughs> precious Rosemary. Yeah, what else do we so have pretty. with Precious Rosemary? There she is. And to this day, I call that Rosemary. That's downstairs in the lower level. That's right. How many have never been to the lower level? If you've never been downstairs, lift your hand. You've never been downstairs? Oh, you've all been downstairs? Very good. Okay. Well, we have uh, at one of our offices there, we have a couple of desks in there. And that desk is still empty. That's, you know, Pastor Eddie has an office in another room. But we still call that Rosemary's desk. <laughs> right. And, and it's people right, use you it's use where it. I work a lot. You, yeah, when I fact, come in, that's you know, pretty much right. It's funny you have your own desk, yes. but yet you sit at Rosemary's desk. I have my own office. You have your own. Oh, you do have your own office. I have my own office. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, you do. Yes, you and do. And I have a desk. And you have a desk. I have my own desk in yes. the in the outer office. Yes, you do. And there we are. Well, there's you and Rosemary together, sweet Rosemary. Oh, that's kiss there, right there, right <laughs> there. There she is. Thank you, guys. So, Rosemary, thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, Rosemary on Friday went home to be with the Lord yes. Jesus. Yes. Yeah, you can clap on that. Uh huh. Sure beats going to hell, doesn't it? <laughs> Sure beats the alternative. And, of yes. course, we're going to miss her. You know, she's been in California now for the last few years. Yeah. And uh, let me tell you something about Rosemary Hines. Really, her, her real name was Rosemary. Did anyone really know her last name? That was her married name. Because she was married to uh, a, a stuntman right. in a movie. She was married to a stuntman in a movie, and that's how she got the name Hines. And he, I forget the name of the movie. Do you remember, Pastor Derek? Sundance. No, I don't remember. S S Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Butch Kid. Butch Cassidy if and the... If you remember, there was a... At one oh, point... Oh, 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 let's go back. Oh. How many remember the movie, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? With remember Robert that movie? Robert Redford. Robert Redford. And Paul okay. Newman. Yeah. It's so an oldie. So tell us what happened. So in one scene, it's either Butch Cassidy or the, the Sundance Kid. They jump off a cliff. And there's like all these racks and they, all you see is this person this one of the guys jumping off the cliff I don't remember who it was that was that was Rosemary's husband the stuntman he was the one who jumped off that the cliff. was Rosemary's husband the stuntman <laughs> yeah okay and uh, so that's where she got the name Heinz actually Heinz Rhodes Rhodes that was yeah, yeah, yeah right. Heinz Rhodes but her real name her real last name birth name is Di Benedetto Di Benedetto. So being Italian, she loved Italian food. She did. She loved your homemade biscottis. Mm -hmm. Well, some of you say biscottis. Biscottis, like, rec That's okay. like ricotta. That's okay. Ragotta. <laughs> ricotta, you know. She loved her good Italian food. She did. But she was She's faithful. A good cook. 
She was a good cook. She was faithful. She was and she even babysat our kids. She even babysat when they were younger. Janelle and James David. Right. My little JD. And even even to you know when the kids got older, we'd say, "We're gonna have Rosemary babysit you," and they're like, "No." no. <laughs> you know why? Because she did her job. She did. She, she, she put did. the. Mom and Dad said no sugar, no sugar. Let Mom and Dad said go to bed at six o'clock. <laughs> Let me tell you, Rosemary could put you in your place. Yes. She, 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 she huh? That's why I should call her Sarge. We, I call, you know, that's right. She I, had a nickname, I, Sarge. I forgot that. Thank you. I nicknamed her Sergeant, Sarge. I, I nicknamed her Sarge. You know, she, she can, she can, she was I a know. dear woman. She was. But she could. She loved the Lord. She loved the Lord, but she could put you in place. Uh-huh. Because she was a mighty woman of God. She was. She was. And yes. uh, well, she's with the Lord now. She's I with know. the Lord. She had congestive heart failure. Yeah, that's what took her into the hospital. That's what took her into the hospital. And yes. we were aware of that. Recently, we were aware of that. If I was made aware of that sooner, we would pray together sooner. Yeah. But she had congestive heart failure. And then when her daughter called us, she told us that she had stage 4 cancer. Yeah, and uh, so we were in touch with her daughter, and uh, she tried to get Rosemary on, on the phone with her, on her cell phone. She, she yeah. did her best to connect. Yeah. But our precious Rosemary is with the Lord Jesus. She is rejoicing. Amen. She doesn't want to come back, and mm -mm. God gave her 80, what, 80, 84, 84 years. 84 wonderful years God Amazing. gave her. God gave her. And something I have not shared with you, which really I had no reason to, and I'm only telling you now just because it's after the fact. Because sometimes when you want to be a blessing to somebody, you don't want everybody to know. You know what I'm saying? You just want to do it like under the radar. You know what I'm saying? You just want to sometimes just bless somebody under the radar, you know? Not everybody has to know, but you know, the Bible says if you do something secretly, God will reward you openly, you know. Sometimes people want to take credit and glory, and you know, I'm sure they mean well. But anyway, I can say this now. I can say this now. Pastor Derek, you don't even know this. You don't even know this. But I was her financial advisor. I literally was her financial advisor. And I guided her with... Um, her finances mm -hmm. as a widow. I told her, or I instructed her, or gave her advice on where to spend, where not to spend, and I, I, made, I made a vow that so long as she was alive, that I would take care of her, that I would take care of her. And by the grace of God, I was able to keep that vow, and uh, she left this earth debt-free, where her Amen. kids don't have to be concerned about her future, and we give God the glory because, you know, she was faithful to this church. She was yes, faithful she was. to me. She was faithful to us, yep. and uh, that was our way of just wanting to bless her back, Amen. and that she knew that if she ever had a financial need or anything of that nature, I said, Rosemary, you call me. I'm there. We're there. So she had a good send-off, and I'm blessed to have a part in her life. Plus, she was our very first secretary. Yes. Amen. Yes. So, yeah, yes. so give it up for Rosemary. Come on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. This past Tuesday, as you know, most of you do know, it was the time for me to go to the village and pray. And when you go to these meetings, it's easy to say, hey, pray for me. I'm going to the village and pray for the mayor the trustees on Tuesday. Okay, we'll pray for you. But you don't do that. Last week when you prayed, I really felt something in the spirit. Because when you go into meetings like that, it's very, very intimidating. It really is. And when you go into meetings like that, it can be stressful because there are people in there already that want to make a petition to either... Uh, build a building or a senior living center and uh, you have attorneys there and 
and the village may be saying, no, we don't want you to have this, and part of the community is saying, we want to have it, it'll bring in more revenue, and the village may be going, and they go back and forth, and individuals that may want work done on their house, and the village may say, but no, you need this permit, that permit. We know how that go all goes when you build a church and all that. So many times there's a lot of friction there. And, th and there are people from all backgrounds, all religions. Then they ask me to get up there and pray. <laughs> but on Tuesday night, there was such a peace in my spirit that I just prayed with such authority and the power of God. And I prayed in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And then I said, in Jesus' name. And we prayed for the Ukraine. We prayed for the nations. We prayed for our community. The mayor, Amen. the police chief was just a few feet away from me. Uh, the fire chief, whatever he's called, we prayed for him. And the power of God was real and Amen. praying over the atmosphere, the region, and the nation. So thank you, church, for praying for me the way you have and the way you do. Because God Amen. uses me more than just behind this pulpit. Yes. And I'm grateful to be a prophet yes. and an apostle to regions, to nations. And thank you, church. Thank you at home for praying for me yes. the way you do. May you share in the harvest as well for what Amen. God's going to do in Amen. America and in our village and in our mayor to the glory of God. Thank you, church. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, when Bishop went home to be with the Lord, the Lord just spoke to me just these few words, you're stepping up. Yes. The Lord spoke to me when Bishop Harris went home to be with the Lord, you're stepping up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we try to figure it out. But after a while, you learn, don't figure it out. Right, Just exactly. discover. Yes. Just discover. I say, thank you, Jesus, and just discover. <laughs> thank you, Jesus, and just discover. So I'm glad that he's allowing me to step up Amen. in new ways for his glory. Amen. Girlfriend, you look so cute today. Thank you. Yes, you, too. you do. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Well, the cafe is open as a cry room right now, just in case you have that situation. And there's a monitor in there, and you could tune into what's happening in the service, and you won't, you won't miss a beat. This Wednesday, we have Facebook Live. It's going to take place, and uh, just Facebook Live only, and it's going to be an awesome time. 7.20 is when the youth and young adults meet, and I'll tell you, those youth and young adults, I say it just about every week. They're going places, and God has taken them higher and higher in the things of him. So grateful for them. Pastor Eddie and Miss Kayleen at 720. They're going to have a great time. Uh, also, uh, 945 on Sunday. Right? Okay. Okay. So on, at 945 on Sundays, just like we did just a few minutes ago, we have uh, remnant prayer taking place. So we just gather up here at the front at 945, and we just, we just, hit the target and we hit it strong and we hit it hard yeah. and we just allow the power of God to just flow and uh, and just the blood of Jesus upon each and every one of us and God's blessings and so it's awesome. Yeah. You know this Pastor Joni was a little hesitant and she looked at me first before she made the announcement. Right. Okay. She did that on purpose because I was going to have Joe come up and share right. but you were not sure. Right. So you did the so right thing. I didn't thing. know if I was. No, no. You, and you did the right around. thing. You did the right thing. <laughs> But Joe, well just way from the back, just out loud, just take a moment and just tell us about prayer on Sunday. So er every Sunday morning, 945, we do daily prayer in, in the front. And you know what? It's been it's been awesome. God has just come in in a mighty way. It's uh, it's it's charged the atmosphere. It's just cleared any distractions, right. anything that the enemy has. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's an awesome time. So I encourage you and I invite you to join us every morning, 945 on Sunday. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. 
And I set feel your, it. Set your priorities in order, right? Yeah. Even again this morning, I, I f- you literally feel it. Mm-hmm. You really feel it, and it, it comes on me. Mm-hmm. And as you know, as the head goes, the body follows. Amen. You know? So we are, we are so blessed as a church. Next Sunday, right here in the sanctuary, Facebook Live as well, 10 o'clock. It's going to be awesome. Amen. I've got some praise reports for you. Oh. God's doing it. I love it that he's working through you. Thank you, Lord, for an unexpected $400 check in the mail. (laughs) Praise the Lord, I received a $2,000 check in the mail. Yes. How many are saying, I want to receive that? (laughs) Me too. I want to do it. (laughs) Amen. Grateful to God for giving our mother victory over anxiety. Related to her medical challenges, hold on. She is healed in her mind and body. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. That's a big thing right now, I'll tell you, with anxiety, especially with this COVID, what it's tried to do to people. So that's a big victory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. And thank you, Lord, for blessing me with a new job with great benefits and making more than at my previous job. To God be the glory. Amen. Promotion, graduation is in the house. Great job with great benefits. Great benefits. And making more. You know, my retirement plan, my personal retirement plan, is out of this world. Yes. You get it? Yes. Out of this world. And as many of you know, uh, I have applied and I was accepted this past Friday. Pastor Derek, you were there at my house. I was accepted this past Friday for Medicare, which starts (laughs) at, I want to laugh because I, I feel like, I feel like what's a 65 year old doing on a swing at the park you know when it should be a two-year-old uh, and this, you know what am I do? I feel like I'm going down the slide like a five-year-old at the park playing in the sand you know I, and you're applying for Medicare and I'm applying for Medicare you know it's just <laughs> I just don't feel it that's good I mean does that mean I'm a senior citizen yes yes I've been for how long no have you been getting your coffee at McDonald's for free? <laughs> That's all I want to know. I, seriously, I've been a senior for, for, for 10 years? Johnny? <laughs> Hold on. What? I, I go to the state's attorney, Jesse White. I go to Jesse White, and I get a free... Right? A, an ID card? What, what's the purpose of an ID card? Are you kidding me? See, Johnny, you're, you're 67, right? You see? You, you know, you don't look 67 at all. <laughs> so I can do that, huh? Wow. Any, hey. Anything else? Yeah, anything else? <laughs> I like that. I like that. They're getting that. better and better. But I just, no, honestly, I feel like, you know, when you see a, a 65-year-old woman or a man playing in the sand in the park and, the, and going on the seesaw, you know what I'm saying? I just Wait, like, I don't see 65-year-old people playing in a park, though. That's what I'm saying. I, oh, that's what you feel like. I see. I, I feel like, I, I don't feel like I'm 65. Gotcha. You know, I, I feel like I should be like, I feel young. Good. That's no, listen, good. Listen, if you're 65, you're young. All right, I want to be careful here. But I don't feel like I'm 65. That's good. That's good. Anyway, so I said all that to say that Keep my... Keep re- going. <laughs> Keep it going. I plan on. Huh? <laughs> Lord willing, I plan on. Huh? Yeah. But my, my benefits, my retirement plan is out of this world. Out of this world. That's so out cool. Out of this world. Yeah. Right. And, Amen. They told me I got. I have three cards that will be coming. Uh, yeah, I got. <laughs> see, so you guys know all this stuff. 
I got, I'm going to get my, medic, my, my drug, my medication card. Wow. I don't have, to, have to get a bigger wallet. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> you're right about that. You're right about that. Uh, I'll need a bigger wallet. And the car I got the, I'm going to have the Medicare. I'll get you I a fanny pack. A fanny pack? <laughs> I'll get you a fanny pack. I so got to be a senior citizen with a fanny pack. Now I know why they carry the fanny packs. Because they got so many more cards to Would carry. Would you stop it? Would you stop it? <laughs> So I'm going to have the... Oh, the you're, I'm going to make you put yours on the side. Because that, that's more hip. It's more yeah. hip, huh? Got it? More hip? So I'm going to have the, what, the A and B card and the... You're going to have A, B, C, D, E, no, no, F, no and C, G. No, no C, because now I got the G. Oh, no, because you're G for gangsta. <laughs> <laughs> Janelle says, Daddy, d Daddy, you're G for God, is what Janelle said. You oh. say I'm cheap for gangster. Oh, excuse I me. Guys, I don't know how all of this works. I just know it works. And uh, I, I know. It's like stepping up. You just don't know. You're just going to trust the Lord and just yeah, ride but it I'm going to have three cars, the A and the B and then the D dun, and the dun, G. Dun, and dun, the, dun, uh, dun, dun, dun. You and Charlie would teach you the alphabet together. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You want to just go ahead and preach this morning or what, no. you know? No, I'm just responding to what you're saying. What, you Johnny Carson's uh, <laughs> sidekick? <laughs> Jay Leno's sidekick or what here? Huh? <laughs> Anything else you want to throw in there while you're at it with that mic at? <laughs> it's a new season, so thank the Lord for these praise reports. Amen. Great job, great benefits. Thank and, you, Lord. Uh, and all of these we, we show on the screen, obviously, to glorify the Lord. Absolutely. Obviously. Absolutely. But in addition to that, to build your faith, to encourage you. That's right. I know you know this, but to reinforce that tithing works. Amen. Sowing seed works. Those praise reports that you see just about every week, and if you don't see them, it's because the Lord just took us in another direction. Right. That's right. But these are written by you, the people. That's right. And they're not the same people. Right. You know, it's a variety of people. So That's right. it shows you, prove me now, says the Lord. Yes. And he will open up the windows of heaven. Okay. Amen. Now, before you sit down, is there anything uh, you want to tell any of uh, You want to tell any jokes or anything? You want to do anything else? Not, not a one comes to mind. Uh, the, not, not a one. You sure? Not a one. But if I sit for a while, let me think. You got time, right? You got time? Let me think. No. Mm -mm. No, I don't. Uh -uh. All right. Then if you're done, babe, sweetie Prox, I just want to be so sensitive to you, my love. If, you, if you're really done with everything, sit down! I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. I love you. I love you. Did you just hit me or pat me? No, I kind of patted you. You just patted me? <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to make sure you weren't hitting me. No, no. If no. you can't hit me. Oh, I like your shoes, too, and your, and your toenails. Did you, get, did you get your toenails done or something? I did. Oh. Look at nice. Looking nice. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sure once I'm on Medicare, you'll be able to get even more of your toenails done. <laughs> Oh, believe me, I got plans. <laughs> you know, but, and we didn't include the plan J. <laughs> For Joni. <laughs> you know, I can't win. I just can't win. I'm a winner, but I just can't win. Well, how many like chocolate bars? Anybody? Yeah. If you don't like chocolate... No, before you raise your hand, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast that thing out of you. So, other than Patricia, if, if you don't like chocolate, if you do not like chocolate, lift your hand. If you do not like chocolate. Oh, Patricia, you like chocolate? Oh, you want nuts in your chocolate. Oh, I got you. Mitch, these women, I mean, how do we... Jeff, how do we please them? Yeah. 
So some of you at home are saying, what did she say? She said, Jeffrey doesn't mind. <laughs> Jeffrey, do you mind? <laughs> you can't see him, but he's ducking down. <laughs> oh, oh, all six foot four or five of him is ducking down. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I really love chocolate. In fact, I love chocolate so much, I, tr I, I try not to eat it. That's how much I love it because I don't trust myself with it. Anyway, I want you to look at this picture here of Apostle John Eckhart and myself. And you see me there. Uh, by the way, that's me in the white jacket, in case you don't know. <laughs> I thought that was funny, but I guess not. You know, maybe Pastor Joni needs to come up here and give you more laughs, or maybe get Patricia up here and, you know, talk about nuts in the chocolate. Well, anyway, as you can see, I'm holding up a small chocolate bar. I'm holding up a small chocolate bar. And he's holding up a large chocolate bar. Well, somebody blessed me with a real large chocolate bar that you see Apostle John Eckhart holding with two hands. Catch this, two hands. Somebody blessed me with it, and I knew, but I could not trust myself with it. I'd probably eat that thing in one night. But then I thought, I don't need to because I'm sweet enough. Oh, you're faking it. No, 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 no. No, I don't need a fake applause, okay? But really, when I, when I look at that picture, it, it means a lot to me. I put it on Facebook a couple weeks ago or so. And it reminds me of sowing and reaping. That no matter what seed you sow, your harvest is always bigger. And it could seem discouraging. You can look at Apostle Eckhart's chocolate bar and you can look at mine. You can say, well, that's not fair. He's got the bigger one and I've got the smaller one. Be mindful that the word of the Lord tells us that when we sow our seed, don't look at your seed just as the seed, but see it and sow it. See it and sow it like you're seeing it as the harvest. In fact, the Apostle Paul went on to say in Galatians 6, 7, 8, 9, he says, be not deceived. Talk it to the church. Don't be deceived about the seed you sow. God's not mocked. For whatever a man, a woman, a boy, a girl sows, that shall he also reap. But the web. But the word goes on to say, with the same measure you use to give, God will give back to you. But it goes on to say, good measure. Good, you get it? Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. And running over. So be encouraged that if you're waiting for your harvest, see it. If you've been saying, I've been sowing, I've been sowing, I've been sowing, start saying, I'm reaping, I'm reaping, I'm reaping. I see it, I see it. Now, many of us are. You, you, you heard the praise reports earlier. You hear them again almost every week. But be encouraged today that when we sow our seed and when we sow it bountifully, we'll reap bountifully. I don't want just to sow my seed and have just a little bit more over. Look at the comparison of those two Hershey bars. In fact, mine is so small you can hardly see it on the screen. Sometimes when you give and serve, it seems like, God, are you seeing this? But he is. But look at that big Hershey bar. That's your harvest. But don't wait for your harvest to see it. And then believe it. Believe it. And then you will see and have what God says you can have. So this morning, thank you guys. You can take that off the screen. This morning, let's worship the Lord with our tithing. Why tithe? Because it's holy. Leviticus 27.10 says it's holy. I want to say that again. Leviticus 27.10 says it's holy. 
You say, well, that's under the Old Testament. Well, so are the Ten Commandments. They're under the Old. Have they suddenly become the Ten Suggestions? But Leviticus 27, 30 says that the tithe is holy. And because God is holy, He's holy under the Old Covenant. And He's holy under the New Covenant. Which means whether it's this is whether this is Old Testament or New Testament, it's irrelevant because God is holy. And so, hear me. And so long as God is holy, Jim De Palma will continue to tithe. Because if the tithe is holy, God is holy. So long as he's still holy, I will continue to tithe. Plus, it's what I owe him. I don't sow my tithe. Huh? I don't sow my tithe. I owe my tithe. I sow my seed. Isn't it interesting? The Bible says the word tithe means what? Tenth. So I won't have to pray about how much to tithe. I won't have to pray about how much to tithe. It's, it means tenth, ten percent. But then why doesn't it not say anything about the offering numerically or percentage-wise? Because the tithe represents my obedience to God. But my offering represents my love for God. And how can I put a price tag? His love is endless and it's limitless. And that's why when Pastor Joey and I sow, not just tithe, tithing positions us. But when we sow, we sow because we love Him. We don't sow, hear me? We don't sow just because we're looking for a big harvest. That's secondary. The chocolate bar is real. The analogy. We sow because we love Him. And then, and then because we love Him and because we honor Him with our seed, He blesses us back like that big chocolate bar. Super abundantly above all you could ask, think, or dare to imagine. So today, let's worship the Lord, you at home. Let's worship the Lord together with the tithe and the offerings. It's the offerings that brings the harvest. The tithe positions you and it opens up the windows of heaven. But the offerings release the blessings out of the window. What good is an open window without anything coming in or something coming out? But the windows of heaven are open on this first day of spring. And the favor and the blessings and the harvest is there. Oblations are just because gifts. First fruits are on top of everything else. Whatever's in your heart to do to honor God, just do it. But he does not need the harvest. Jimmy needs the harvest. Somebody say, Jimmy needs the harvest. Jimmy needs the harvest. You need the harvest. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is his ottoman. I'll say it again. The earth is his ottoman. <laughs> Father, today we worship you. Because the tithe is holy. And we sow our seed because we love you. But yet you promised a great harvest in return. So take the tithe, the offering, oblation, first fruit, use it for your glory. And continue to bless these people. But Father, I declare multiplication over them. Remnant givers. Remnant harvest in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. And I want to thank you, Encounter Church, for your continued faithfulness. Even though we're supposed to do it, I still want to thank you. Because many in the body of Christ, people just dishonor God. But not in this house. I'll say it again, not in this house. And that's not just a statement of faith. Not in this house. So if you would like an envelope for your giving, there should be one 
under your seat or in front of your seat, behind your seat. If you don't see one and you'd like one, you could lift your hand and Usher would be happy to help you. If you're writing a check, you at home as well. If you're writing a check or checks, you can make them out to Encounter Church. If you're using credit card here in the building, there's information on the envelope. Please write down your prayer request, your praise report. As you see, we take them both to heart, especially on Wednesday nights when we really start praying the fire of God over those prayer requests, even before then, though. You can give, even in the sanctuary right here, you can give on your, on your phone device, your smartphone. You can give right now through PayPal. At home, you can give on PayPal right now. You can go to OurEncounter.com. It's on the bottom of your screen there. OurEncounter.com. It's safe. It's secure. The church pays the surcharge. It's safe and secure. You tithe an offering. You can do it that way. You can call in the church with your information. If you get a voicemail, just leave a message and someone will get back to you. You could put it in the mail. Or you could stop around this beautiful first day of spring into the church building and drop it in the black secured mailbox. Lord bless you so much. We're going to sing a song, More and More of You. Let's worship the Lord together as we sing before we receive tithes and offerings. And you at home, this is your opportunity as well. lived a short life, but I'll never forget, he must increase, I must decrease. You know, folks, when we have more of him and less of us, it's easier to stay out of trouble to the glory of the Lord. 
Before you sit down, truly, truly give him another big praise. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. Somebody shout, it's time for the word. Well, that was good. Somebody at home, join us in this house and let's all say it together. It's time for the word. Well, there you go. I started sharing with you, and Pastor Eddie really knocked it out of the ballpark last week, didn't he? Two weeks ago on a Wednesday, I started to share with you on a Wednesday a spontaneous word the Lord gave me on a Wednesday night. I really love Wednesday nights. But two weeks ago on a Wednesday night, spontaneously he gave me a word, and the word was, who are you fighting against? Who are you fighting against? And as I've been waiting on the Lord all this week, I just felt his impression in my spirit to say, speak that word again and continue it and add on to it because there are those that needed to hear it and need to hear it for the first time and there are those that need to hear it again. Who are you fighting against? Now, there is a war in the climate today, right this moment. There is a war in the climate right now as I speak. Now, it's interesting because today is not only Sunday, the Lord's Day, but today is officially spring, as we all know. And as today is officially spring, what's happening in the atmospheric realm, in the natural climate, that is, we'll talk about the spiritual, but in the natural climate, there's a war taking place. And here it is, it's spring. But how many know that old man winter does not want to go away? Huh? Old man winter does not want to go away. And I respect winter, but you know the saying, old man winter does not want to go away. He does not want to go without a fight. Doesn't want to go down without a fight. So what's happening right now? in the cosmos, what's happening in our orbit, what's happening in the atmospheric realm. There's a shifting. Literally, there's a shifting. Now, we're going somewhere in the spirit with this. There's a shifting in the atmosphere. The east, the west, the north, the south. Then there are wind speeds and directions. Sometimes the wind will come from from, from the west or the uh, uh, northwest or from the south or east and, you know, in different directions. In fact, spiritually, John 3, 8 says the wind blows where he wishes. You hear the sound of him thereof, but don't know from which direction he comes from. That's the Holy Spirit. But it's the same in the natural realm that there's uh, the wind. Uh, when you watch the news, whatever news you watch and Whoever it is showing you the news, they'll show you a gust of wind coming from, from the south. It may come from Texas, and it may come, and it's coming up north, and it may be heading in an eastern direction, and, and there may be something from, 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 from the, 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 the north coming to the Midwest. And there, There's an atmospheric change happening this time of year. And folks, it happens four times a year, as you know, in the summer. The fall, the winter, the spring, there's like a, it's like a war in the atmosphere, if you would. There's like a, like there's a change and, and one doesn't want to let go, but, and the other wants to be released in the atmospheric realm. And, and that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Well, it, let me take it further. In Genesis chapter 8, 22, I think this explains a little bit of what, we're trying to say today. In Genesis 8.22, if you look at the screen, this is what it says. I'll read it to you. Listen to this very carefully. While the earth remains, are you still on the earth? Yes. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, watch this, Cold and heat, wind 
winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. In other words, so long as we are still alive on this earth, before God destroys this earth with a fire like he said he would, he destroyed the earth the fight first time by a flood. He's going to destroy this earth the second time with a fire. I don't want to confuse you now, but nowhere in the Bible does it say that the world will ever end. In fact, the Bible says world without end. World without end. But earth as we know it will change. God will destroy this earth earth as we know it, but the world will remain, and in the world, God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth, or some call it the new Jerusalem. But now let's get back to the natural here. We see that there's a time to be cold. I don't know about you, but I don't like to be cold. <laughs> some people love the cold. They love the cold. Pastor Derek just got back on Wednesday from Minnesota, spent a couple days with his family, and he sent me a picture, and in the picture, Pastor Derek, at least the picture looked like 10 feet of snow. It was high. I mean, it was over my head. It was over your head? Yeah. It was over your head in Erie, Lake, by Lake Erie, in, L what do you call L it? Uh, Lake Superior. Lake Superior uh, in Minnesota, and, and some people just love the cold. They just love the cold. Okay, but God ordained the cold. God ordained the cold. And then there's the heat. Baby, bring it on. I like the heat. Then there's the heat, winter and summer. But what I'm saying is God created it all. And day and night shall not cease. We'll talk about daylight savings time in a few minutes. But that shall not cease. So we see now there's a climate change. There's a change in the atmosphere. There's a change in coming to the way we dress. We dress one way in the winter, and we dress another way in the summertime. And you get it, and you get it, and you get it. So this verse here in Genesis 8.22 shows us that there's winter, there's summer, there's spring, without mentioning everything, okay? So there's a place and a time for all things to change. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says there's a time and a season for all things. So now we're entering a season of change, but not without a challenge. You hear what I'm saying? Not without a challenge. So there's a war going on, even in the atmospheric realm. Maybe not a war the way some may think, but nonetheless. Okay, now, James chapter 4, verse 1, if you'd put that on the screen, please. Many are fighting a war within themselves. I'll say it again. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody at home needs to hear this. Somebody in this building needs to hear this. Many are fighting a war within themselves. James 4, 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you, church? This is James, the brother of Jesus, or at least the half-brother of Jesus. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? So here we have another war, not only in the atmospheric realm, in the natural, Genesis 8.22, but now we hear of a war that's taking place within you. There's a fight and a battle that takes place within you. There's a part of you that wants to serve God. There's a part of you that wants to obey. There's a part of you that wants to love. There's a part of you that wants to say nice things. But then there's a part of us sometimes that wants to do the contrary. In other words, the flesh wars against the spirit. This is what it means by members, that your mind is telling you one thing, but your heart is telling you another thing. The desires of your flesh or your will or your intellect your, or your emotions are saying one thing, but your heart is saying another thing. Your heart is saying, 
give like you've never given before. When your flesh is saying, I got to hold back, the price of gas has gone up. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. But there's a fight within us. We're talking about who are you fighting against. So there's a war taking place within our members. And that's why we need to crucify the flesh. We knew the mind so that our spirit person can be in control. And as I said on Wednesday, if you're born again, your, your heart is not deceitful. Your heart is not wicked, even though Jeremiah 17, 9 says that at that time it was for the people of Judah, and it is for those who do not know the Lord. But for the born-again Christian, if you are in Christ, you are a new creation, and all things are passed away, and all things have become new, and he who joins himself to the Lord has become one spirit with the Lord. So if I'm one spirit with him, and he lives in me, I don't have a wicked spirit and the Holy Spirit living in the same house because a house divided against itself will fall. It cannot stand. Take five seconds and give God a holy clap. Come on. Now, 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 let's take this further. Let's take this further. Many are fighting a war within themselves. We spoke about the atmosphere. The change in the climate and the season. Many are fighting within themselves, and that's, we understand, there's the war going on. We're, we're, we have to die daily, the word says, of course. But listen to this, Romans 8, 1. Many in the church are fighting against themselves. I'll say it again. There's a reason why I'm saying this today, because somebody needs this. Somebody needs this. Many are fighting against themselves. Now, it's one thing, James 4, 1, to have a war within your members. But it's another thing to fight against yourself. Have you ever heard somebody say to you, or you say to somebody, you're your worst enemy. Yeah. I'm my worst enemy. You know, guys, there's so much truth to that. Unfortunately, there's so much truth to that. But may I remind you, Romans chapter 8, verse number 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are, listen to me, those who are in Christ. Who are in Christ. You know, many times we say, I need more of Jesus. Right? But listen to this. I need more of Jesus. But how about Jesus needing more of me? Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. Therefore, there is now, when? Now. now. No condemnation to those who are in Christ. Not just to those who speak about him or pretense of knowing him. Those who are in Christ, watch this, comma, who do not walk according to the flesh. Right? Remember James 4.1? the war of the members, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And when we realize that there's a war taking place within our members, James 4.1, then we go to Romans 8.1 again, and we realize after I've crucified the flesh and the nature of the flesh, then I realize now I can walk in the Spirit by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. And when I walk through the power of the Holy Spirit, crucifying the flesh, renewing my mind with the Word of God, then there's absolutely no room for condemnation. And when there's no room for condemnation, I'm no longer fighting against myself. We fight with people. We'll talk about that. But many times, the biggest opponent is the one staring at you in the mirror. And it should not be that way. So we are in a season of war, as I mentioned. So now my next question is, and don't be quick to answer. The Bible says be quick to listen and slow to speak. So the question is, after the first question, 
First question is, who are you fighting against? Second question is, be slow to speak. Whose team are you on? Think. Whose team are you really, really on? Because I know at first what your first answer is. All of us. But when we get done, you're going to know for sure whose team you're really on. Okay. Whose team are you really on? Now, just to rewind 22 years. We're going to go back 22. Where were you 22 years ago? Where were you 22 years ago? You weren't even born, some of you. 22 years ago, we had what was called Y2K. You remember Y2K? And uh, Christians were freaking out. Not the world, Christians. Isn't that, isn't that peculiar? <laughs> you would think that the church would be at peace and, and the world would be in chaos. But it was the church in chaos, you know. And, uh, you know, the world's coming to an end, we were told. And, and the computers are going to melt down and crash. And uh, the Antichrist was going to come on the scene. And, and, and listen, I say this respectfully. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And people were out and they were hoarding food in their, in their garage, f uh, filling their garage up with food and dried food and everything else and canned goods and generators. And some even went out and bought shotguns because they have to protect their food. And Listen to me. I know of churches that had seminars on Y2K. Well, my theme was not, not, my theme was not Y2K. My theme was Y2 Pray. Seriously. Seriously. And folks, the truth is to this day, there are people that are still paying off their generators on their credit card 22 years later. Now remember, I asked you a question. Whose team are you on? Okay? Because if you were one of those that ran to the hills of Arkansas, I hope by then you've changed teams. All right? Whose team are you on? Civil unrest. By the way, we had church that night, Sister Vella. We had church that night. Okay, and you know, in, in New York, they're an hour ahead of us. They're an hour ahead of us, and uh, and the ball still dropped in New York at midnight on, on January first, twenty twenty. The ball dropped, and the world did not come to an end. And by that time, we were still having service at nine ninety County Farm Road, in Carroll Stream, Illinois, and uh, we thought, hey, if New York ain't gonna collapse, Chicago's not gonna collapse. But we knew that. And we continued to have service till what, about 3 o'clock in the morning, would you say? Yeah. About 3 o'clock in the morning, right? Okay. So anyway, now we live in a society. Again, whose team are you on? We have civil unrest. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You can respond. It's okay. It's a new season. I'm talking to the remnant today. Now, if, you, if, if you're just a crowd, I, I expect nothing from you but just to, just to be entertained. And if you're a congregation, we appreciate you being here. And if you're committed, I appreciate that. But if you're the core, that's the remnant, then... Then, then I think there's something more within you waiting to come out. Can I get a witness from someone? Ah. Paul provoked the Jews to jealousy, and I'm provoking you to go higher. All right. But there's civil unrest in our country. Racial injustice. Black, brown, white, blue, blue lives, social, political wars, protests, marches, and let me tell you, uh, folks, I'm just throwing stuff at you that I'm not saying is all wrong. I'm certainly not saying all is right. I'm saying the world we live in today and how we need to spring ahead to where we're going. All right? All right? Uh, so, so some of this could be st good stuff. Uh, uh, strikes, uh, teacher strikes. Uh, uh, for goodness sake, baseball was on strike for nearly 100 days. Major League Baseball was on strike for 100 days, and schools, mask mandates, and uh, students, students optional uh, wearing mask or no wearing mask, and, and picketing, and, and uh, what do I do? And then, uh, of course, do we defund the police? Do we not defund the police? You see where we're going here. And then, of course, we have our Republicans. We have our Democrats. We have our liberals. We have our conservatives. We have what we call the left. We have what we call the right. Let me tell you something about the left and right. You ready for this? Okay, here's the left, and here's the right. You ready for this? This is what the left and right do. Here's the left. Remember before in worship, we were going like this, right? Okay. Um, 
Here's what the left and the right do. Because somebody said, what's the definition of the left and the right? Here's the definition of the left and the right. Beating each other up. Beating each other up. Knocking each other up. Knocking each other out. And that's what the church does. The church beats itself. Churches beat churches. Pastors beat on pastors. Church folk beat on church folk. Can I continue? Yes. All right. Left, right, the war of CNN versus Fox. I had a pastor not too long ago. He came to my house to have dinner. He said, oh, Jim, what kind of phone do you have here? Let me see your phone. So I showed him my phone, and he saw all my apps on my phone. And he saw that I had a CNN app on my phone. He said, are you really serious about having a CNN app? I'm telling you the gospel truth. I said, yeah. He says, really? He says, I, I thought you were sold out for the Lord. See, now I know how some of you are thinking right now because I, I could read your mind by the Spirit right now. I mean, I, let, let me rephrase. I, I, I could read what you're thinking by discerning of Spirit. See what I'm saying? So don't, don't, don't look at me like, okay, because I, I know what you're thinking right now, some of you. We'll, we'll, knock, we'll knock the hell out of, out of that religion. We'll, we'll, we're going to kick the hell out of it, okay? We'll kick the shiitake out of it, okay? All right. I had to say shiitake because, you know, for some folk you can't say, you know, okay. But it's okay to laugh at it when you watch TV with your four-year-olds, okay? Okay. But uh, so, so he went through my phone, and, and then he seen he had, I had Fox. He says, oh, thank God that you are saved. He wasn't joking. At dinner at my house, my wife made him homemade sauce, spaghetti, meatballs, the whole nine yards. Folks, listen to me. Uh, it, uh, then, we have, then we have the, again, folks, I'm just throwing stuff out there. Then we have the Chinese virus. Oh, well, yes, but Alex, here and there. We have the Chinese virus. We have the coronavirus. We have COVID-19. I'm going by definitions of where we've been in our country. You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? Okay, here we go. Okay. We, we have, we've, we've had 37,000 deaths in the state of Illinois through COVID. We had 37,000 deaths in the state of Illinois. In the state of New York, 67,000, hear me folks, 67,000 deaths in the state of Illinois, okay? In the U.S. of A, just under a million, 957,000, 957,000 deaths in America, Worldwide, over 5 million. Worldwide, over 5 million deaths worldwide. And now the positivity rate in the state of Illinois is at 1.2. 1.2. Deaths have decreased dramatically. We've been claiming that this thing's got to dry and die. But why am I sharing all this? Because despite all this incredibly wonderful news, Satan lifts up his ugly head again. And before you can even rejoice that the death rate has gone down, And the virus is not spreading like it was. It's still there. Still take it serious. But before we can even shout and rejoice in the Lord, here comes the devil. Gog, Magog, Ezekiel 37, 38, 39, Russia, Moscow, Putin, Ukraine, on the verge of a third potential world war, which I don't believe it's going to be right now, the world war, not until Russia invades Israel. Then after that, I won't be here for the rest. I'm going up in the first load. Because the remnant of the, fi- the, the, remnant, the remnant of the five wise in the church, the, fool, the foolish are the, are the five that were left behind. So there will be some left behind. I told you someday Pastor Eddie's going to be senior pastor. That's after he's left behind. He's going to... 
<laughs> no, Pastor Eddie, I'm joking. I love you. <laughs> Gio, don't get mad. I was just teasing, all right? Okay. <laughs> He said, how could you say that? He just married me a few weeks ago. Yeah, he did it with my blessing, son. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. But, no, seriously, folks, and here's the devil. Here's the devil. J just when you want to celebrate life, the devil tries to come and bring death. You, you see where we're going with this, right? And then there was the quarantine, a war over that. Should the church remain open? Should the church close? Should I listen to the government? Should I not listen to the government? Social distancing, no social distancing. Masks, anti-masks. Vaccine, anti-vaccine. Illegal aliens, undocumented refugees. Wall, no wall. Gas, fuel, Russia, Ukraine, Keystone Pipeline. See, some of you like where I'm going until, until you don't like where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keystone. Oh, I got my opinion. Yeah, I already read it on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you only got two likes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, 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 uh, uh, Keystone Pipeline. Drilling, no drilling. Again, folks, I'm just throwing stuff out there, okay? Just to make your head spin and let every devil go to hell. Okay, natural, because the remnant, they, they, they get sharper and sharper. Natural energy, climate change, the environment. Okay, you see where we're going. NATO, no NATO. Shank sanctions, how many sanctions? Send USA troops to Ukraine, don't send them there. Should we have the right to bear arms and guns? No guns. Here's one for you. This is the latest one. This is the latest one that the devil's using to pick, up, to pick apart the church. Folks, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Many churches should be like mental institutions. I'm, I'm telling you, listen to me. Now the church is arguing over should we have daylight savings time or not have daylight savings time. Folks, there's, you can create a war a do, doing anything. Oh, God. Somebody say, dear Jesus. Should we spring ahead or should we fall back? Folks, some of this stuff is funny, but there's truth to this. There's truth to this. Hot dog. How dare somebody put ketchup on a hot dog? Mustard on a hot dog. Now, folks, it's one thing to have a preference. It's another thing to create division. You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? Okay. Pizza. Well, I like thin crust. Not me. I like deep dish. Now, I get it's one thing to have a preference. It's another thing to make a theological debate discussion where you break fellowship with people. And it happens. COVID proved it. COVID proved it in the chat. Church. You have New Yorkers fighting against, against Chicagoans. Who has the best pizza? Folks, it's one thing to have an opinion or, or a preference. That's okay. We have the north side. We have the south side. Anything to divide us. Shoot. We even have Cub fans and Sox fans. And you have those fans that hate each other. You have Cub fans that go to war against White Sox fans. White Sox fans go to war. Listen, I love baseball. I, I, I mean, I really enjoy baseball. I love sports. But to take it to a place where you hate, it's okay to prefer a team. Not everybody can love the Yankees, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's one. <sighs> Let me hear them, Jesus. Okay. Listen to me, this is the word of the Lord. Whether we realize it or not, church, we've become territorial. We've become territorial. I want to tell you something what I'm waiting on the Lord for. Something that I don't have to wait on the Lord, something you just do. He, you see somebody that doesn't have shoes, you don't have to pray. You give them a pair of shoes. Guys, I'm waiting on the Lord. I told you there's a ministry, 
In fact, I'll just tell you, it's Joe Mannell's ministry. He's, he's starting a, a new ministry for children. For two children. The Lord put in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, in the time, in time, write him a check for $10,000. Thank you, Lord. Can I boast about my God? He's in Orlando. I'm in Chicago. But here's what I'm waiting on the Lord for. Some things you don't have to wait upon the Lord for. But I asked the Lord the other day about that Dell down the street. You remember 1315 West Lake Street? You remember that building? Remember that place where we had a $42,300 a monthly mortgage? Remember that? And $10,000 a month in utilities, 53000 That didn't include salaries or anything. Like, do, do you remember? A, a month. You got that. Remember that, right? You remember that, right? I've been waiting on the Lord, Nancy. I've been waiting on the Lord, Mary. I've been waiting on the Lord, Donna, Patricia. I've been waiting on the Lord to take all of their 14 buses with the price of gas, all of their 14 buses where they pick up kids on the south side of Chicago. They pick up kids on the west side of Chicago. They, and they drive them to church. These kids have no money. They hardly have parents. They have no money. And I've been thinking about, not just thinking, I've been waiting on the Lord just going over there and filling up every one of those buses to the brim with gas, all 14 to the glory of God. You say, why? You must have a lot of money. No, we have a lot of vision. We have a lot of vision. We have purpose. We want to unite and not divide. We want to do something that will bring the church together, not split us apart, not separate us. My God, it's time. It's time for the church to arise. It's time for the church to arise. Let the church be the church. Let the church be the church. You know, it's interesting because Wednesday night I had a vision when I was ministering. And I used the word pogo stick. Did I say that Wednesday? I said, Sunday you're going to be like pogo sticks jumping up and down. But we become territorial. Pastor Joni and I, we pass by that church every Sunday. We go out of our way to go home. And we see them and we say, Lord, bless them. That you had us do something for them that they could not do for themselves. So he used us to do it. That's kingdom. And now in turn, they're doing something with their 14 buses that we're not. Because we're not competing in the kingdom. We're completing in the... Shout! So I mention all these things, guys. And I know some of this gets under your skin. And you're, I know your, your, your Trumpite wants to come out. And your Bidenite wants to come out. But I think you need to let it all out and let Jesus in completely. All the, come on, somebody. <laughs> Even arguing over daylight saving time. Just enjoy your pizza. Just enjoy your pizza and be quiet, would you? <laughs> then we have in the church. We have biblical doctrines and teachings and beliefs. We have from denominations to non-denominations. We have churches and church splits. We have tongues, saying tongues are no good. They're of the devil. Healing, no healing. Jesus stopped healing 2,000 years ago. We have people that believe in deliverance, no deliverance. Uh, uh, we, believe, we have people that believe in the Trinity as the Father, Son, Holy Spirit as three beings. And we have people that believe in Jesus only where he's in one being but three persons in one. We have so much from, from grace to hyper grace. To, to the rapture, to no rapture, to the pre-trib, to the mid-trib, to the post-trib, from prosperity to poverty, uh, even from wine to grape juice. In the church! So I ask you, whose team are you on? Because when I initially asked you 20 minutes ago, instantly I knew what you were thinking. But now I'm asking you, whose team are you on? Because if you're a Cub fan, you're on the wrong team. No, I'm 
if you put ketchup on if you put ketchup on the hot dog, you're on the wrong team. <laughs> if, if you like deep dish over thin, you're no, no. Okay, now I'm gonna go quick. Are you ready for this? Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I, I'm, I'm, guys, I'm gonna be like a steamroller. So have it ready. Here we go. John chapter 10, verse 10. But listen to me. America is at war. Hear me. America is at war. Hear me. I prophesy. Listen, look at me now. I prophesy. America is at war against Americans. But the church is at war against churches. Fact. 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 America is at war against Americans. And the church is at war against churches. John 10, 10. For the thief comes not only... The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. He doesn't want to just take away. He wants to totally take you out. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 says this. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Look at verse number 9. Resist him. Don't re hear me. Don't resist me. Don't resist me. Don't resist each other. Resist the devil. Don't resist Biden. Don't resist Trump. Resist the devil. Resist him steadfast. I remember mean Joe Green. I remember mean Joe Green. Uh, uh, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood in the world. In other words, your brothers who've gone on before you, they've gone through suffering. They had to put up with the devil, but they were able to conquer over him. And if they were able to conquer over him, so are you. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, But you are not ignorant to Satan's devices. What Paul was really saying, he was being nice. He was saying, don't be ignorant to Satan's devices. Folks, this is not about hot dogs, peanuts, Cracker Jacks, apple pie, and baseball. This is not about Fox or CNN or the left or the right. We're, we're in a real war. We don't want Satan to take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant. That word ignorant is the Greek word idiotes, idiotes. The word idiotes in English means idiots. I want you to shout, I am not an idiot. I am not an idiot. Then why do we act like them? We be as a body, corporate body. We, I, I'm in part of the body. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. Look at this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Keep it going. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Casting down arguments. Ah, casting down arguments. Say arguments. Say arguments. arguments. Come down. Come down. Those are the things I just mentioned. Casting down arguments in every high thing. Every high thing. You know, a hot dog on a bun can be a hot thing, a high thing, if your heart's not right. Did you know that you're arguing over your favorite sports team can be a high thing? Listen, it's all against the knowledge of God. Listen to me. Bringing every thought into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. Next verse, please. Verse 6. Watch this. Watch this. And being ready to punish. Punish. Shout punish. Punish. All disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled, folks, this is the word of the Lord. So I have to ask you again, who are you fighting against? Who are you fighting against? And whose team are you on? Ephesians 6.10, I'm going to read this quickly. Look at this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Somebody shout, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Come on, shout it. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord, the power of his 
of his might. Next, look at this. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Keep going. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Keep going. For therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Folks, this is the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand, keep it going. Stand therefore. Again, stand, 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 stand. Stand, 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 stand. Therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, keep it going, and having the shot, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, keep it going. Above all, shout above all. Shout it. Taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Next verse. Take the helmet of salvation. You know, those 6,200 thoughts a day, those 6,200 thoughts a day, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The helmet of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Next verse, please. Praying always. Folks, if we're praying always, we don't have time for opinions. If we're praying always, we're not going to be territorial. Praying always with all kind of prayer. All kind of prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All kind of prayer. Father, I resist the devil in Jesus' name. All kind of prayer. Santa tekina barata tenabusa. Mentini bibibike. All kind. Shout all kind of prayer. All kind of prayer. Supplications being made. Watchful. Watchful. Not your eye on Fox or CNN. It's okay to watch, but we need to be watchful. To the end. To the end. With all perseverance, supplications for all the saints. Shout for all the saints. Amen. 19. And for me, that utterance may be given to Jim De Palma, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known this mystery that I've shared with you today. Look at verse number 20. For which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to. Folks, if Paul could speak from prison in chains and utter boldly the word of the Lord as an ambassador, how much all the more can we? Folks, let me close this. You are on Team Remnant. You're not just on any team. Listen to me. I know some things about baseball. There's A, double A, triple A. I know some things about baseball. Folks, we're no longer in any A division. We're no longer in the double A or the triple A. Remnant is in the major leagues. We're in the major leagues which means there are major devils out there. But you serve the major of majors, God Almighty, the commander in chief. Bring us into battle to fight the enemy. We're in a new season, a new season. And we're gonna march in March. I said we're gonna march in March. You at home. We're going to march in March. And we're going to war to restore. We're going to war to restore in this new season. Because the Apostle Paul says, here's what we've been called to do as remnant people. 2 Corinthians 5.18. We've been called. Look at the bottom there. And he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now all things are of God 
who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Folks, you're in the major leagues now. There's fastballs being thrown at you, curves, sliders. But we've been called to the ministry of reconciliation. That means not bring division, but peace. In the natural, if you want ketchup on your hot dog, go for it. But I'm talking now in the realm of the spirit. Love thy brother. Love thy brother. Love thy sister. We've been told by Beth Dell up the street that we're talking about filling their buses with gas. We've been told by them that they don't believe what we believe. They told me, Pastor Fernandez told me, we don't believe in your speaking in tongues. It's okay. We don't believe in laying hands and deliver. It's okay. He's still my brother. He's still my brother. I'm sure there are things that, we, that I could say I, I don't agree with. You. But folks, it's not always about agreement. It's about coming together. It's, co it's about coming together. Putting your spiritual hot dogs aside. Putting your spiritual pizza aside. Uh, your, your climate. Put, put a, uh, fast forward the clock. Leave it, you know. Just, 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 just get in the spirit realm. And stay there. Say, I, say I've been called to the ministry of reconciliation. But not just that, as I said a moment ago, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Look at this. Now then, you are ambassadors for Christ. As through God, we're pleading through us. We implore you, beg you, on Christ's behalf, for Christ's sake. That's what it's saying. For Christ's sake, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Why? Because we've been called not only to the ministry of reconciliation, but we are ambassadors. That's who you are. You're an ambassador in Christ. In Psalm 9, verse 9 and 10, listen to this. Be encouraged, folks. This is to the remnant, not the crowd, the remnant. The Lord also will be a refuge for those oppressed. Church, hear me. A refuge in time of trouble. Next. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken who seek you. That's remnant. The remnant are the ones that seek him and know that he will never leave them nor forsake them. While others are arguing over everything else I just mentioned moments ago. Dissecting and tearing apart. The Lord says to my remnant who seek me, who trust me. I won't forsake you. And finally, Micah. As I read on Wednesday, Micah, chapter 4, verse 5. For all people will each in the name of his own God. For all people walk, for all people walk each of them in the name of his own God. But we, the remnant, will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and forever. Hear me, people of God. For all people, shout all people. Shout it again. For you at home, shout it with us. For all people will walk in the name of his God. There are many people whose God is money, whose God is to spread strife, to spread division, to be territorial, to create arguments with each other, to debate this, to debate that, to take political sides for all people.
Each walk in the name of his God. You know that your name of your God could be fear, could be prejudice, could be rejection, could be insecurity, could be offense, division. For all people walk each in the name of his own God. <laughs> but we. I said, but we. I said, but we. Yes. Talking about the remnant now. Crowd, we love you. Congregation, we love you. Committed, we love you. But the core, we will walk. We're not going to faint. We will walk in the name above every name. In Jehovah Chibra, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Chira. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, in the one name whose eyes are flames of fire, whose hair is white as wool, whose train fills the temple, whose feet are as brass, whom the cherubim, the seraphim, they cry out night and day, day and night, holy, 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 shout, holy, 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 shout it. But we will walk in the name of our Lord God. The name that will not put us to shame. The name that does not receive rejection. The name that looks at an individual and says, There's hope for you. There's hope for you. You may not be where you need to be, but there's hope for you. You may not be where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be. But we, through storms, through trials, through wars and rumors of wars, through the right to the left, through Fox and CNN, from viruses to bomb threats, nations at war, but we, the church of the living God, we will walk in the name above every name, the Lord our God. And to top it off, I said to top it off, we will walk in that power, dominion. Hold on, hold on, I ain't finished. We will walk in that name, that authority, and that power. Listen to this. Here's how to close it. Forever and ever shall. Mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. Give him a shout. Dress for battle. Holy Lord of all is he. Commander in chief. Bring us to attention. Lead us into battle to crush the enemy. Come on, wrap this. Mighty warrior. Stay Dress for battle. Holy Lord of all is he. Sing it like you mean it. Commander in chief. Bring us to attention. Lead us into battle to crush the enemy. That authority. Satan has no authority here in this place. He has no authority here. For this habitation was fashioned for the Lord's presence. No authority here. Just Pastor Derek. Church, stretch your hands toward me. You ain't stretching your hands towards, toward anybody. I represent the king today. Hear me. I represent the king today. You at home. You at home. I represent the king. I'm not the king. I represent the king. I am his ambassador. Right now, all over this house, 
I release your portion. I release your portion. I release your portion. You at home, I declare and I release your portion. Now everyone scream, I'll take that. I'll take that. Shout it. I'll take that. If you believe it, give him a shout of praise. Yeah. One more time, mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. Holy Spirit, put the finishing touch on it now. Maybe you're here today, you've walked away from the Lord. Maybe at home or you just tuned in now, your church service just got over with or something. Maybe you're watching this later. If you've walked away from the Lord, come home, come home, come home. If you don't know the Lord, come home, come home. Stop getting beat up by the devil. Just pray, Jesus. Come into my heart. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, take away that old, ugly heart. Replace it with a new one made in your image. Forgive me by faith, Lord. I've, I've blown it. I've sinned. I've failed. I've screwed up. But now, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I welcome you back into my life to be my king, my king, my, my ruler, my leader. I accept you, Lord, now. And if you've prayed that prayer at home, if you've prayed this prayer in this house, we welcome you and we welcome you back. And now, it is surely sealed. Yes. It is surely sealed. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, it is done in Jesus name protect it protect it digest it meditate on it it is done watch and see says the Lord in this new season suddenly your Monday become marvelous and your Tuesday become terrific and your Wednesday wonderful and your Thursday tremendous and your Friday What's Friday? Fabulous. Fabulous. Guys, I'm a little high right now. Your Saturday is sensational. The Super Sunday. Because we're marching in March. There's a war in the atmospheric realm because this coming week, it's supposed to snow. This coming week, it's supposed to snow. Not stick, but snow. Not stick, but snow. But you say it's spring. There's a war. There's a war of a change. But right now we're in a war and we're witnessing the change in the spirit. And we win. You win. You win. Those of you at home, you win. We're going to sing it one last time, Mighty Warrior. Mighty Warrior, dress for battle. Lead us into battle. Jesus, Jesus has. Jesus has all authority here in this place. He has all authority here. For this habitation was fashioned for the Lord's presence. All authority. You that have been watching.
watching at home, you are to share this message with somebody. If our arms are long enough, we'd give you one big hug. If our lips are big enough, we'd give you one big kiss. Till we meet again, Wednesday night, Facebook Live, 7 o'clock Central Time, 720 Youth and Young Adults on Zoom. You can find out more through Pastor Eddie or calling the church, whatever. We love you. God bless you.